Good afternoon, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Singapore Bicentennial Conference, organized by the Institute of, Public, of, of Policy Studies, which is part of the Lee Kuan Yew School of Public Policy at the National University of Singapore, or NUS for short. This conference benefits from the support of the Singapore Bicentennial Office, as well as several corporate and educational organizations. I now invite the Institute's director, Mr. Janadas Devon, to deliver the opening remarks. Director, please. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests. Singapore's bicentennial is the occasion for this conference. This conference is not about the bicentennial. Indeed, the way we have marked the bicentennial this year, even the bicentennial has not wholly been about the bicentennial. The Singapore bicentennial, we say, and faster than you can say abracadabra, we add, but Singapore's history goes back to 1299, ostensibly the date when Sang Nila Utama arrived in Temasek to spy a lion and thus named this island Singapura, which means Lion City for those of our guests from overseas. In 1299, five centuries before the English gentleman pirate Stamford Raffles landed here in 1819. Our bicentennial, it turns out, is really the septicentenary, which is 700 years. Not really 200 years, though 1819 undoubtedly marked a decisive turning point in our history, but an occasion to look back into somewhat deeper time, at least 700 years. This divided nature of our bicentennial commemoration is perhaps unavoidable. When we marked the 150th anniversary of Raffles Landing in 1819, we weren't so ambiguous about marking that anniversary. 1969 was only four years after we separated from Malaysia in 1965. The 150th anniversary, which someone of my generation remembers very well, was an assertion above all that Singapore had had a viable existence as an island, city, colony, long before it merged temporarily with Malaysia in 1963. 1969 was the occasion, if you like, to rewrite the narrative that led to 1963. For before we separated from Malaysia, we had been convinced that Singapore could not have existence, could have no existence, apart from its hinterland, which we thought then was Peninsula Malaya. In 1969, we remembered that the British had never ruled Singapore as a constituent part of either the federated or unfederated states, Malay states. Indeed, the British attempt to create a Malayan Union, including Singapore after the war, had floundered precisely because Malay majority Malaya didn't want Chinese majority Singapore. For the entire period of our colonial history, Singapore had either been ruled as a separate crown colony or as part of the Straits settlements, Penang, Malacca, and Singapore, with Singapore being the seat of the governor of the Straits settlements. In 1969, just four years after breaking bitterly from Malaysia, we had need of this history. We had existed apart from the peninsula for 150 years, we told ourselves. We can exist for many more centuries by ourselves. And the parade that national day in 1969, when the Singapore Armed Forces rolled out its first armored components was further evidence we could. Our past, as we conceived it then, the 150 years we marked in 1969, 
was the effect of present causes, our separation in 1965. 50 years later, we have perhaps less need to be reminded that Singapore had had a viable separate existence from Peninsular Malaysia before our unhappy merger. Also, we now know more about what came before 1819. Archaeological evidence joined with deeper historical studies have produced a richer rendition of the 500 years preceding Raffles Landing. Many people in the 1960s, even professional historians, took it for granted that Singapore had always been terra nova, new land, when Raffles landed. The proverbial sleepy fishing village from time immemorial when nothing much had happened. That belief can no longer be countenanced if it ever could. From the vantage point of 200 years, we now wish to tell ourselves a more involved tasseled, interwoven history of ourselves, or from Singapore to Singapura, or Singapore, from Singapore or Singapura to Singaporean, to use the subtitle of the bicentennial experience. But what is this more involved history? Is it a story of continuity from 1299 to 2019? Or is it a story of breaks, departures, detours, and separations? Or is it a story of repetitions with a difference? After 54 years of existence as an independent state, we are more ready to take up these questions. This conference, with the bicentennial as the occasion, is an opportunity to do so. It is never easy to be aware of one's own blind spots, but the choice of speakers and themes for this conference evinces, I think, a greater equanimity among Singaporeans about our own history. The past we construct need not always be the effect of present causes. The first session today, we will see Professor Frank Oppen, the author of the Magisterial The Silk Road, Silk Roads, as well as Professor Boschberg, provide an overview of how ancient maritime and land routes linking east and west evolved over the centuries, and how the city-states in this region play a role in trade, and how did they manage their relations with major powers. There will be four sessions tomorrow. The first with Professors Wang Gangwu and Leonard Andaya, who will look at how recurring separations and connections played out in Singapore's and the region's history as a result of colonialism. While the second with Professors Gyan Prakash and Tan Ta Yong will look at how similar themes of contestation and choices played out in the post-colonial era. Professors Brandon Yeo and Farish Noor will examine how the themes of diversity and identity have been regarded both before and after colonialism. And in our concluding session, we have Professor Mr. Mikkel Thwait of Bloomberg News and Professor Tommy Koh look specifically at Singapore at our impending challenges. The Prime Minister was have attended our dinner tonight, but he had to add Armenia to his travel over the weekend um, at the last moment. Um, and where he was to sign, he has actually today, I think, signed the Singapore-Eurasian Economic Union trade, free trade agreement. In its place, I'm grateful the Deputy Prime Minister, Heng Sui Kiet, has agreed to come. It took some doing, but I think we have managed to gather a most remarkable group of scholars for this conference. The thumbnail sketches that I've just provided are, I assure you, most inadequate reflections of the richness you're about to hear. I trust we will have a fruitful one and a half days. Welcome to the Singapore Bicentennial Conference. Thank you. <laughs>